Hello students, today let us learn about biological nitrogen fixation. Let us start with the introduction. Nitrogen forms a major element of organic compounds including amino acids and the nucleic acids in the body of all living organisms. Although molecular nitrogen forms approximately 80% of the Earth's atmosphere, most organisms cannot utilize the free nitrogen and this nitrogen is first fixed in the form of ammonium or nitrate ions before its incorporation into plants by a process of reduction known as nitrogen fixation. This process of conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into the nitrogenous compounds by living organisms is called biological nitrogen fixation or diazotrophy. Biological nitrogen fixation was discovered by the Dutch microbiologist Martinus Wegerink. The next, nitrogen fixtures or diazotropes. The process of biological nitrogen fixation or diazotrophy can be carried out by only some microorganisms like bacteria and cyanobacteria. And these organisms which can carry out nitrogen fixation are called nitrogen fixtures or diazotropes. The nitrogen fixtures may be symbiotic or free living, which are also called non symbiotic. The different groups of nitrogen fixtures are first, free living or non symbiotic nitrogen fixation. Free living or non symbiotic nitrogen fixation is the fixation of free nitrogen of the soil by microorganisms living in the soil outside the plant cell. Such type of nitrogen fixation is carried out by aerobic and anaerobic bacteria and blue green algae. The next type under this is free living or non symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria. It includes bacteria which live freely in the soil and convert free nitrogen into soluble nitrogenous compounds which are absorbed from the soil by plants. The free living or non symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria are of four types. The first one is the free living non photosynthetic aerobic nitrogen fixing bacteria, example Azotobacter, Vegerinchia, and Dulcia. The next are the free living non photosynthetic anaerobic nitrogen fixing bacteria, example Clostridium. These anaerobic microbes predominate in grassland and waterlogged soils and soil aggregates where moisture conditions and organic substrates are available but oxygen supply to the microenvironment of the bacteria is severely restricted. The next are the free living photosynthetic nitrogen fixing bacteria, example Chromatium, Rhodosudominas, Rhodospirillum. The next include the free living chemosynthetic nitrogen fixing bacteria, example desulfovibrio. The second group are the free living or non symbiotic nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria or blue green algae. It includes about 15 genera of photosynthetic cyanobacteria or blue green algae found freely in the soil and they fix free nitrogen into nitrogenous compounds which can be absorbed by the plants from the soil. Most of the free living nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria, example Nostoc, Anabina, Olocera, Cylindrospermum, Calotrix, etc., contain special thick walled cells termed heterocysts or heterocytes along the cyanobacterial filaments where nitrogen fixation occurs. The heterocyst functions to separate the nitrogen fixing enzyme nitrogenase, which is unstable in the presence of oxygen from the other oxygen evolving photosynthetic cellular activities of cyanobacteria since heterocysts contain only the photosystem 1 which generates energy or ATP but lacks the photosystem 2 which splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. However, some free living nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria are non heterocystous example oscillatoria for medium gliocapsa. The second group is the symbiotic nitrogen fixation. 
Sympathetic biological nitrogen fixation is the fixation of free nitrogen of the soil by nitrogen fixing organisms that develops loose or associative symbiosis with plants. For example, Acetobacter, Azospirillum brasilensis, Pseudomonas azotogensis, Enterobacter, Vacillus, Klebsiella, etc. Or establish long term symbiotic relationships by living inside the host plants within specialized structure, as in Rhizobium and the Legume nodule. The symbiotic biological nitrogen fixation are of three types. Nitrogen fixation in leguminous plants involving nodulation, nitrogen fixation in non-leguminous plants with nodulation, and nitrogen fixation without nodulation. First, let us take up nitrogen fixation in leguminous plants involving nodulation. Nitrogen fixation is carried out by the bacterium rhizobium in the root nodules of leguminous plants. Although rhizobium also lives freely in the soil, it can fix nitrogen only when present inside root nodules of leguminous plants. The nitrogen fixing bacteria in nodules of leguminous plants can be grouped into three groups based on host specificity and growth of bacteria. As rhizobium species, example rhizobium leguminoserum of peas, rhizobium melilotai of lucerne, Rhizobium trifoli of clover, rhizobium phaseoli of beans, rhizobium lupin of lupins, etc. The next is the Brady rhizobium japonicum, which is a symbiont of soybeans. The next is Azorhizobium colinodans, a symbiont inside stem nodules of the plant Cisbania. Let us now see the mechanism of nitrogen fixation in root nodules of leguminous plants. The first step in the process is nodule formation and it starts with interactions between the free living soil rhizobium and roots of the host plants. The rhizobium living in the immediate vicinity or rhizosphere of roots is first attracted by chemicals like flavonoids and betaines secreted by the roots of young leguminous plants and they migrate towards the root hairs and produce node or nodulation factors. The knot factors are present on the surface of bacterial cells and they bind to the lactin proteins present on the surface of root hairs. This binding of knot factors to the lactin proteins induces growth and curling of root hairs around rhizobia. It is followed by degradation of cell walls in response to knot factors and rhizobia enter the root hair through invagination of plasma membrane forming a structure called infection thread. Alternatively, the bacteria can also enter by a second mechanism called crack entry in which no root hair deformation is observed and the bacteria penetrate between cells through cracks produced by lateral root emergence. The infection thread containing dividing rhizobia elongates to the root here and from branches that reach the cortical cells where they are released either single or in groups and closed by a membrane. Inside the cortical cells, the rhizobia stop dividing, lose cell wall and become nitrogen fixing cells known as bacteroids and the membranes surrounding the bacteroids is called peribacterioid membrane. The infected cortical cells of the root then divide to form the root nodule which serves as site for nitrogen fixation. The mechanism of nitrogen fixation by bacteriates in root nodules is carried out with the help of an enzyme complex consisting of the nitrogen fixing enzyme called nitrogenase and an oxygen scavenger called leg hemoglobin also called leguminous hemoglobin. The nitrogenase is extremely sensitive to oxygen and it is protected from cellular oxygen by the oxygen scavenging reddish pink pigment called leg hemoglobin. The enzyme nitrogenase has two components, a molybdenum iron protein or molybdoferidoxin component and iron protein or azoferidoxin component and this enzyme catalyzes the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen in the soil to ammonia which represents the first stable product of nitrogen fixation. Biological nitrogen fixation involves reduction of the free dinitrogen to ammonia and it occurs in a stepwise reaction forming many intermediates before producing ammonia, 
which is finally protonated at the physiological pH to form ammonium ion. During this process, molybdenum iron protein binds the dinitrogen until it is completely reduced while ferridoxin serves as an electron donor to iron protein. The iron protein acts as the nitrogenous reductase and hydrolyzes ATP and reduces the molybdenum iron protein which in turn reduces the dinitrogen as shown in the reaction. The overall equation for biological fixation of nitrogen can be represented as Next, let us take up nitrogen fixation in non-leguminous plants. Many non-leguminous plants also produce root nodules and fix dinitrogen of the soil. Example, Francia which is an actinomycetes or a filamentous bacteria which fixed nitrogen in root nodules sometimes called actinorhizae of many non-leguminous plants like alder, sea buckhorn and casuarina. In addition, rhizobium also forms root nodules with plants belonging to the genus Perasponia. Next, let us learn about nitrogen fixation without nodulation. Nitrogen fixation also takes place in some plants by symbiotic association but without forming root nodules. Some examples of this type of nitrogen fixation are lichens which are symbionts of cyanobacteria with fungi. Then association of anthocyros, a bryophyte with nostoc which is a cyanobacteria. Then symbiotic association of the water fern azola with anabina azolae which is a cyanobacteria. Aerial roots of cycas, which is a gymnosperm containing anabina or nostoc, and stem of Ganeria macrophylla, which is an angiosperm containing nostoc. Let us now learn about ammonia assimilation. The ammonia produced during biological nitrogen fixation by nitrogenous in the nitrogen fixers is immediately protonated at the physiological pH to form ammonium ion. The ammonium ion so produced is toxic and is rapidly utilized for the synthesis of amino acids and excess ammonium ion are stored in amides. Amino acid synthesis from the ammonium ions commonly take place near its site of generation and it occurs by the method of reductive amination, amide synthesis and other secondary pathways like transamination and carbomyl phosphate reactions. First, let us see reductive amination. In this pathway, alpha clitoglutarate acts as an acceptor of amino acid to synthesize glutamate catalyzed by the enzyme clitoglutarate dehydrogenase. The enzyme brings about amination of alpha ketoglutarate in the presence of ammonium to form alpha immunoglutarate as well as reduction of alpha immunoglutarate to produce glutamate and the reaction uses reducing power in the form of NADH2 in non-chlorophyllous tissue or NADPH2 in chlorophyllous tissue. Glutamate then acts as the donor of amino group for the synthesis of other amino acids. Although glutamate synthesis acts as the major pathway in amino acid synthesis, reductive amination of other keto acids like pyruvate and oxaloacetate catalyzed by amino reductases results in the formation of alanine and aspartate respectively. The next is amide synthesis. The excess toxic ammonia is fixed as amides such as glutamine and asparagines and the synthesis of amides is catalyzed by specific amide synthetases. The synthesis of glutamine requires ATP and is catalyzed by glutamine synthetase which adds extra ammonia group to the additional carboxyl unit present in alkyl groups. It is a two-step reaction in which enzyme-bound gamma glutamyl phosphates acts as an intermediate. Similarly, the synthesis of asparagine is catalyzed by the asparagine synthetase in the presence of ATP. This amides acts as reserve compounds of ammonia for the synthesis of amino acids and they release ammonia by deamination reactions whenever there is a need for ammonia. 
Next is the transamination pathway. Other amino acids are derived from glutamate or glutamic acid through a process known as transamination, catalyzed by the enzyme aminotransferases, also called transaminases. Transamination commonly involves the transfer of amino group from one amino acid to the keto group of the keto acid. Example, glutamate, which is an amino donor, combines with oxaloacetate, which is an amino acceptor, to form aspartate, which is an amino acid, plus two molecules of oxyglutarate. Next is the synthesis of carbamoyl phosphate and arginine. Plants also use the free ammonia to synthesize carbamoyl phosphate with the help of the enzyme carbamoyl phosphate synthesis, utilizing ATP in the process. The carbamoyl phosphate is then used in the synthesis of other amino acids like ornithine, citrulline, and arginine, and also for the synthesis of nitrogenous bases. The amino acid arginine is also synthesized by direct condensation of urea with ornithine where urea acts as the source of ammonia. Now coming to the conclusion. Biological nitrogen fixation is an important process by which microorganisms convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous compounds usable by living organisms. The process of biological nitrogen fixation is carried out by both free-living and symbiotic organisms in the soil with the help of the enzyme nitrogenase that converts the free dinitrogen to ammonia or ammonium ions, which are then used for amino synthesis in plants. Thus, nitrogen fixation helps in the fixation of atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia, which is utilized for the synthesis of amino acids during assimilation of ammonia. Thank you.